Va bene, direi che cominciamo intanto. So we can start with the greetings. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the second webinar today created by, organized by OCRIM. My name is Anna Buffa, I'm sure you know me, and I work in food and communication. And I'm here to be a moderator in this webinar. The duration is 30 minutes, and um, you can also ask questions in the Q&A. You can use the box at the bottom of the screen and uh, we are going to ask the questions to our speaker at the end of the session. So you can write and don't be shy because questions are anonymous. If you have longer questions, more complex questions, you can send them via email at the address you see here and you will receive more complete answers. The two sessions today, uh, well, in these two sessions, we have Marco Galli, he's our rock star of the mills. He's known to everyone and he has been working in Ocrim since 1983 and he is head of the technology department and he's also the author of various patents. Today, we are going to speak about savings in energy in the mill and the various ways that can be used to save energy during, for example, maintenance and therefore have better performance in the mill. As Marco says, you cannot do everything in all the mills, but something can be done in all the mills. Marco, the floor to you. Can you tell us, starting from this, can you tell us what you wanted to say to us? I think you're muted. Yes, I apologize. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome. Very shortly, the, uh, we are going to talk about, well, first we are going to analyze the concept of consumption and how it is uh, in the mill. Then we're going to talk about some solutions that we offer, especially for a more rational management of the um, high capacity mills. And I'm going to give you some general tips that can be followed by everyone. Then they were going to have conclusions. And then I hope there will be questions in the Q&A session to clarify what I have said. So, first of all, when we talk about energy consumption, we need to define a strategy. I always like to say that there are no magic solutions in a single point. The reduction in energy consumption is a step. I mean, there are different steps that, has to, that have to be done in different parts of the plant. And of course, they can be supported by innovative solutions, but they can also be achieved by some kind of fine tuning, some adjustments in the plant to optimize what you already have. Then, of course, if you have different actions, then you have different impacts. We will see that there are some areas where a small intervention has a higher impact and other areas where, even if it's a big um, intervention, the uh, benefits are not as big. But we also always need to understand whether we can intervene in all the sections in the plant. And the impacts, of course, are going to be different. Bef first of all, we need to compare and we need to understand where we are in terms of uh, energy consumption. This are, these are a couple of figures to just give you an indication. We believe that a consumption in, for the whole process, 
including, well, this is between 62 and 65 kilowatts uh, hour per ton. Well, we believe that this is a good consumption. This is something that is achievable and we can have as a target. If we were to reduce this target only for the milling section, we would go from 45 to 48 kilowatts hour per ton. What is important to say is that when we talk about comparing consumptions between different plants, it is important to compare also the milling diagrams and also we need to see how this plant is made. For example, plants with flower silos that are big are generally plants that have higher consumptions if we compare them to a very simple flower silo. This is why it is always important to compare things that are as much as possible similar because, of course, we don't want to have data that is not uh, accurate. Now, we need to understand and we need to see the distribution of energy consumption in a plant. We see that, of course, the mill is the one that has the highest consumption, followed by flower silo and then pre-cleaning and cleaning. So our strategies for intervention must take this into consideration, always remembering that all the interventions that we will do must have as a target a reduction of ROI and also the reduction in, co in general costs for the management of the plant. Now, if we want to go into more detail and focusing on the mill, let's see how the various the consumptions are distributed in the various areas. And we see that, of course, we have roller mills that have highest cons uh, consumption, but also the pneumatic system or anyway, transportation of finished products system. This is to say that each section has its own importance and it is not just something that if you do something there, you can solve the problem of consumption. To obtain a good result, we need to have an action plan. And I'm going to say this many times because it is important to understand that it's a whole set of actions that give a result, not just one action. So you need to create this action plan and this action plan must be created so that you have a short ROI. I, well, at the beginning, I would avoid a, to intervene for those actions where the benefits might be reduced. We must always remember that energy consumption is the consequence of other choices for about automation, about equipment, about technology, and about the layout. Each of these items have an impact that is more or less important on consumption because automation can allow us to rationalize the cycles, the equipment can be more or less efficient, technology in many ways can help us to reduce consumption and the same goes for layout. Well, let's start with a combination between technology and layout. This is the one that I launched some years ago on the market. It's called Modular Mill Concept. This is a technology that allows to group in different groups a one single milling unit so that this unit can be stopped without compromising the whole production with benefits that are both direct and indirect. Uh, for direct benefits, 
I have an increase in production and for indirect benefits, and we will see this later, I have a better management of maintenance and I have a reduction in energy consumption. So this is a different way to obtain or to ensure a good management of the plant. And here we see the benefits of the modular milling. I have three groups of which two are always working. That, and so I can ensure at least 50% of production. This is both during maintenance and during a downtime, unexpected downtime. This allows to plan maintenance in a more flexible way because there is an impact on production, but it's a lower impact. And this allows me to use in a more rational way the resources I have available. And it also allows to implement the various cleaning steps. I mean, the management of the plant is going to be more rational and costs are reduced because the people involved, human resources, instead of having to work on all the machines or the equipment on the plant can be used in a, for a lower number of equipment. And this, of course, makes cleaning and maintenance easier. In this slide, we see the comparison between, we're talking about a 650 TPD mill, a standard one, and a mill with the same capacity, but with modularity. You see that for maintenance, both in the roller mills and the filters in the sifters, we have high reductions in down, downtime. So all of this together leads to a reduction. I have compared the two technologies, the two mills. This leads to a 42% reduction. It means that I can use the plant in the most efficient way. I can use the, I can increase the use of the plant. And of course, this has a, a positive impact on the ROI and on, on general costs without changing the philosophy of the plant. So this is a first example of combination between layout and technology. And here we see the impact of this solution on the energy consumption. So we have, well, when the uh, plant is working in full, in total, if we uh, implement the module concept, for example, in unexpected downtime, okay, and we compare this to what would happen in case of an unexpected downtime in a traditional mill. Well, in this case, we see that the delta between two and three allows us to have a energy saving considered in 300 working days of about 145,000 euros per year. Now, this value can be a bit higher, a bit lower, based on the conditions, but we obtain this value. And this always happens. I mean, this is going to be forever, because if you apply this modularity concept, you always have this uh, saving in the plant. The other thing is automation. So how automation can help us to save energy. This is an example in the transitional steps. So when I am starting the plant or when I have downtimes, unexpected downtimes. So automation with the loop, the pneumatic loop. Well, let's um, imagine a pneumatic that when it's empty for empty running, running uh, consumes 150 kilowatts. If we intervene on the management of the inverter that controls this, if we are able to reduce the kilowatts 
to 109 or 110, we have a saving of about 41 kilowatts. Now this 41 kilowatts multiplied by all the times this is done, in the end, give us high savings in terms of kilowatts and therefore savings in energy on the bill. Another aspect where automation can help us is in the management of the silo of finished products. And why am I saying this? Many times, I, I guess it happens to you too, many times we have to move the flour simply because we didn't have flour available in the right part of the silos and I couldn't put them in the bags. So I had to move the flour or I didn't have the right flour to do the mix. So I had to move it. This is an example, an example of a cycle managed with an engine of 110 kilowatt. For your information, a cycle of tra flour transfer with a, an engine of 110 is about 200 euros. Multiply this 110, I'm sorry, these um, 200 euros by all the times you move the flour in the silo for finished products. Remember, every time you move the flour in a flour silo and you don't give added value, then you are generating a cost. If you have, there is added value, there is a return. Otherwise, it's simply a cost. Another important aspect is in the management of equipment or reliability of the plant. So I'm talking about the optimization of capacity. Here we have two examples, 15 minutes of unexpected downtime in a 600 tons mill is about 300 kilowatts. I don't know how long the, the, your downtime is. Now, here we are talking about 15 minutes, a very short time. If this number is multiplied for all the times, for all the time of the downtime, you understand that, of course, then the figures become very high. The other aspect is the reliability of the plant. Here we have this example, one ton per hour in a mill of 600 TPD. The impact is about 5% on energy consumption. So I increase by 5% consumption if I reduce one ton per hour of capacity. So you see that the impacts in the end, even though there are small numbers, then in the end, the total figure is very high. Another important aspect is layout. Now layout, well, because this has a direct impact on the calculation of the pneumatic, both in terms of lines and num I mean number of lines and size of the lines, we know that the size of the lines are related to the amount of air we move. At the same time, there is a heavy impact on the transfer of finished products. So the size of the engine and indirectly the calculation of aspirations. Now here, I'm going to tell you an indicative number. One cubic meter of air costs 1,000 euros a year, more or less, for a pneumatic system, and 150 euros a year for a suction aspiration system. So potentially, of course, the values can be very high. I mean, the numbers can be very high. And this is a demonstration of this. In a mill that is 600 TPD, if we were, for example, if we were able to save 10% of the air, we would have a saving in, in consumption and therefore a, a theoretical reduction in the bills of about 18,000 euros a year and recovering 10% of energy 
Well, recovering Terpin and Tavir. Well, I think that anyone could do that. Any one of us is able to do that. Another interesting aspect, especially in the design phase, is the management of the rebuild sifter with relift and without relift, a system compared to the other. Now, it requires more or less about 40 kilowatts of installed power. Now, 40 kilowatts to have the same result, you have a saving. Oh, actually, the delta is about 130,000 years. I mean, sorry, euros a year of potential saving in the system uh, without relift compared to the one with relift. So with pneumatic lines. These are examples. Another example is having the B1 and B2 uh, uh, on the trunk of the, um, I mean, you, you could also reduce four pneumatic lines for a total of 2.3 cubic meters per second, equivalent to 120,000 euro a year. All of this with the same result. So elasticity in trying of flexibility and trying new solutions can be winning to give positive results to the final user. If we want to sum up, and it is important to underline, I mean, this is all a potential savings, okay? Well, here we see the figures and this is helpful. Of course, as Anna said before, not all the mills can do everything, but for sure, all the mills can do something. Now, let's see what this something is. Let's look for this something, but this because this is where you actually start saving. So to, to conclude, there is not a single solution. There is a, not a magic wand saying, do this and you will solve that. The reduction in consumption is a whole set of actions, automation, layout, equipment, the milling flow can all together help to reduce consumption. And the other thing to be said, and that's important, is that to achieve a reduction, many times it is necessary to talk with an expert. So people who have already completed this path, this is why we always suggest to speak with experts because maybe the idea you have might seem useful but then in the end it's probably not sometimes so to conclude <coughs> you need to be helped and you always need to remember that it's details it's the fine tuning that guarantee you to reach energy saving. If you wait for the magical solution to start, I'm afraid that you will never start. I hope that it was helpful and I gave you helpful insight, hopefully. Thank you for participating and, oh, and I am will be more than happy to answer any question. Thank you, Marco. You were very clear, as usual. Also for a, someone like me who is not an expert in this field, there is a question. Is it possible to do the retrofit of the adjustment loop of a pneumatic system that is already existing? Yes. You need to understand how the plant is, so what system it uses, but the answer is yes and it's really worthwhile to do it. I mean, those who don't have this should start taking this into consideration because benefits are really high. So it's strongly suggested, you say. Yes, yes. A question. 
in Spanish. What are the three parts of the meal that consume the most? Well, for sure, it's the uh, rollers, the pneumatic system, and uh, the transfer of the flowers in this order. So first, it's the milling part, and then the pneumatic system, so everything that is managed with air, and the transportation system of the finished products to the various destinations. These consumptions change based on the layout and based on the calculations, but this is the order. Another question, and then maybe we can conclude. The modular mill concept, can it be integrated in already existing plants? Yes, but we said that you needed a, an accurate evaluation of the pneumatic system to be able to uh, place the loop with this concept. This should be done in an even more detailed way, because unlike the pneumatic system where we can only use the automation system in the modular mill concept, there is automation, the management of the layout, and also the process diagram. So it's a whole set of processes which must be very well analyzed if you want to obtain results. But yes, it is feasible. We have some customers uh, who have received the retrofit of the plant because they understood the importance of this. Very good. First of all, thank you for this uh, remark. And for the other questions that are maybe more complex or anyway, you can write to conference room at, uh, at uh, com, and to be updated uh, on the news, you can follow us on social media, on the blog, on LinkedIn. Thank you, Marco, again. I hope to see you very soon again. And thank you again to the participants. Thanks to you and uh, uh, have a nice day to everyone. Goodbye.